of all, the UN, the UN, listen to us. The civil society, we've been writing letters for you. We wrote for somebody who's sitting behind a camera this week. We've written for a hero that's over there uh, four times in a week. And finally, we're getting answers from the rapporteurs. Now, we've had videos made as well for your torture. And we're sending constantly letters, videos, and evidence to the UN to invite them in. I want them back. We did get them in five years ago, okay? In 2011, when Mr. Zare started, Mr. Zvi Zare, who is my hero, um, started CCF, it was the very first time we went abroad and it shocked the UN so much that they came in and asked questions and then they rounded everyone up and arrested them, but they came in and we're trying to get them back and I will bring them back. If it's the last thing I do, they will come back and they will see you. Now, I'm sorry, you've got to wait. We've got to move on because I've got the time people looking at me in a funny way. Um, the right of the child. Let's just talk about the child, the UNCRC. Every child has a right to be raised by his blood relations. Every parent has a right to raise his child. That is the right of the child. If a child is going to be adopted, it takes 12 months, according to the UNCRC, and with full permission of both parents, if there are. All the rights of the child have been broken in Israel, all of them. Why? Because there's no ombudsman. There's no one here for the children. You can only go to Shapira, who is the children's ombudsman. Yosef Shapira yeah. is protecting your children. Whoa, isn't that great? Are you brave? Do you feel brave? Are you brave? Not you, you're big. Are you little boy brave? Come with me. The right of the child in Israel is not held. You can't take pictures of your children unless you're living with them and it's their birthday. You can't do anything with children if the social workers tell you that you can't. Well, making a video, sorry, I'm going to stop you. If this was a bar mitzvah and he was standing here and everybody was at his party, he would be able to say thank you to everybody for my bar mitzvah. That is okay, yeah? Now his mother's standing here and he has the right as a child at the age of 13 passing his bar mitzvah to speak. It is his right, and no one is going to stop this child from speaking because it is right. It is the law that says he can. There's no law that says he can't, and not in my world. 13-year-olds can say whatever they want. The rights of my grandchildren to speak in a court of law instead of being told right. what to say. Now I'm just going to stress this again that children are shown on Facebook having baths, riding horses, having donkeys, eating cake. Everyone shows their kids every weekend doing whatever they want to do. This child is standing with his mother, this young 13-year-old boy, and he came all the way from Jerusalem because he wants to tell the UN what it's like to be a child in an emergency center. I think he has the right, don't you? Yeah. yeah. I also think this mother is incredible because she got her kid back. Uh, I need someone who knows how to use a discount key in my computer because we want to show some happy family pictures. Somebody help me? Um, I know you're upset about this, some people, but is anyone telling me your kid can't speak? Right. Off you go. Do you want to hold the mic and help him with this pushing of his story? Do you want to hold the mic? Now, Yael is South African, okay? And obviously, you're a little bit of both. Come over here. Come over here. And your name is? My name is Aurel. Okay, Aurel. And I understand that you were taken to an emergency centre. Am I right? Yes. So do you want to tell everybody what it was like inside that? Well, it wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't fun. Uh, do you want to try and describe how it felt for you? So, um, I was taken there and it was just like out of the blue. Uh, one night they told me it was going and the second day I was in a taxi going there. So, they took me there and I, once I was there, um, I met my new house mother and everything. And after a few days, like they let me go out of the house in there. And I met other kids and the kids were like, for a couple of days were nice and then they start being abusive. And so were the staff. The staff like at the start one of the staff members, which is a volunteer, um, uh, hit me and I fell to the ground and like I started crying because it hurt. And then afterwards, like towards the end, another staff member choked me. 
Which emergency centre were you in in Israel? Do you remember where you were? Uh, yeah, in a rabbi name called Naradim. And tell me, could you see your mum all the time or not all the time? Um, only two times a week. What was it like for the other five days? Not fun. Like, I was there and I was needed to be with the other kids and they kept annoying me and bugging me. Yeah. What about going to school? Because I understand when you're in an emergency centre or you're held, tell me what it was like to go to school. It wasn't really a school, it wasn't even approved by the... Um, it wasn't even approved by them, they were just trying to get it. But I was taught by an 18 year old who basically just taught me math, and that's it. Were you given it? It was in the place, so I didn't even get to leave. Really? So, did you get a judge given to you, or someone to, so that you could tell the court what you wanted? Um, I wasn't really able to tell the court directly. I had to tell uh, someone who would tell the court, like my lawyer. It wasn't really a good lawyer. She didn't even listen to me. She said what she thought, not what I was saying. Do you remember? Oh, she'll tell her. So tell me, when you told your lawyer things, are you saying that the lawyer said things that she thought that you wanted to say, not what you actually said? I told her something, and she said, to like, okay, I'll tell that, but I'll tell her. That's what he thinks. I don't think I think exactly opposite. I don't like he would represent herself basically. Okay, so we know that in Israel the law is, as I still understand it, um, thirty days in an emergency centre. Can anyone correct me if that's wrong? It's still thirty days by law to hold a child. The first step is thirty days. Thirty days. How long were you in the emergency centre for? Um, from July up to per. Up until Purim? Nine months in an emergency centre. Nine months. It's actually against the law. Six months is the max. What year? Three. Three to six. Three to six is the max. And when did you come home? Was it this year? Uh, yeah. It was just... It was per. So, um, I'm not going to put words into your mouth because that's not fair and I want you to tell it exactly as it is. But um, what was the worst, worst thing about being in there? Not being able to be with my mom and my, like, not being able to be at home and going to school and being with my mom. Not being able to, not being able to live a normal life. Did they tell you why they took you? I kept asking and they told me that the, it's not my fault, mommy's fault. And then mommy asked why they took me and they kept telling mommy it's not her fault, it's my fault. So like, they were twisting it around. So you never really knew why you were taken. You were just taken one day, and that was that. So you've come out now, and I'm so happy he's free, aren't you? Yeah. I'm so happy he's free. And she I met her last year, and I told her, the only hero that any child has in their life is their parent. That is the hero. The hero is the parent. And she fought for you, didn't she? Tell me, what's it like to be home now? Does it feel strange? Um, a little bit better. Like, like um, I, it's way better than being there. And I like being home. And it's fun. I'm living a normal life again. What was the food like? Was the, they didn't give you anything extra over the food, did they? No, but it was like actual cooking. The food was okay, just not like they gave us any extra but food. No, no medication. No pills? Um, no. Oh, she told him, don't, if the food tastes funny, don't eat it. If you can put something in your mouth, spit it out. He got all the rules from his uh, heroic mother. You are amazing. Um, and it's because of you and because of children like you that we are going to fight for the rights of the children of Israel. You are such a hero. I'm so proud of you.
lived in Israel most of my life. Uh, I finished high school here, got married here, and I have four children. I'm a mother of 27 years. OL is my baby, um, the last one that lives at home. Um, when he was put into the I've been given a five minute warning, so I want you to concentrate for me. Just tell people here, how did you get it back? I basically went to war with the river Ha. Um, I fought with the river Ha. I kept getting into trouble with the police because the well was brave enough to leave where he was being abused and was able to make his way home. And when the whole police force were looking for him for 12 hours, and they found him asleep in my bed after I found him full of mud and I hadn't called them yet to let them know we found him. I got arrested um, for kidnapping. Uh, the police broke into the house. Yeah, they broke into the house. Uh, they demanded I give them a child. I said, we just fell asleep. He's been in the rain and the, in the mud for 12 hours. I didn't call him because I gave him a hot bath and some hot alcohol and I just snuggled him until he went to bed and I fell asleep because he cried. Gotta keep you focused. Okay, so um, uh, what, what, then what was the question? I want to know the final thing that got him out of the emergency centre, uh, please. The final thing was firing my lawyer from Siwa Mishpati and representing <laughs> The lawyer from Sierra Mishpati refused to give documentation, tapes, a proof of what a good mother I am. I had a teacher that was witness to three years of educating my son who said that I was the best mother in his class. They had no reason to take my child. We were in financial difficulties and they went in and lied about the reasons they took him. I had all the proof to show them because I'm very organized and I, I, I run a nationwide organization. I love her, but we are so running out of time. Uh, if anyone wants to know what she did, we will. I have video, though, we do have a story, but just hey, she got.